Okay, now I'd like you to compare objects B, E, and A. These are all objects we've already talked about, uh, but now we want to compare all of them uh, to each other. Uh, so, uh, remember that all of the objects are starting at the height of the cliff and then eventually hitting the ground. In all cases, we're starting at the height of the cliff and then hitting the ground. Object B is being thrown down at 3 meters per second. Object E is being thrown up at 5 meters per second from the cliff. And object A is being dropped from rest from the cliff. Object A is dropped from the cliff from an initial speed of rest. Object E is thrown up from the cliff at 5 meters per second, and object B is thrown down from the cliff at 3 meters per second. So try to list these um, in order of which is moving the fastest and which is moving the slowest when they hit the ground. Which of these objects will be moving fastest and which will be moving slowest when they hit the ground? Please pause the video and try to work that out. Start with the path for object A. I hope that you tried to work that out by drawing paths. So for object A, the path looks like this. Keep being in the habit of drawing the velocity and the acceleration vectors. And object A at this height was going 0 meters per second. This is object A. Now object B. is also just going down. Object B is thrown down, so it just goes down. And again, it has a velocity that's down and an acceleration that's down. And it was thrown down at a velocity of negative 3 meters per second. Again, we're still choosing up as our positive direction. So the initial velocity of object B was negative 3 meters per second. I think it should be pretty clear then that object B is going to hit the ground faster than object A. Object A is starting from rest and speeding up, and object B is starting from a speed of 3 meters per second and speeding up. Um, so object B is going to be moving faster when they hit the ground. Notice that the question is asking which is moving faster, so the question is not exactly asking about their velocity when they hit the ground. The question is asking about just their speed. Remember that velocity indicates both speed and direction. Velocity indicates both speed and direction. But the question wasn't really asking about direction. It was just asking about speed, which is moving faster. So, um, we, should uh, so we should just ask which of these is going to have a higher magnitude of velocity when they hit the ground. Well, this is starting at a speed of 0 and then speeding up. And this is starting at a speed of 3 and then speeding up. Well, if you start at a speed of 3 and speed up, you're going to reach a, a greater speed eventually than with 0. So we know that B is going to end up going faster than A. B is going to end up going faster than A when they hit the ground. Uh, now let's compare that to object E. Now we know that object E's path is a little bit more complicated. Because originally object E was moving up. So object E's path has two uh, portions, the upward portion and the downward portion. Uh, we know that uh, over here the velocity is up and the acceleration is down, and over here the velocity is down and the acceleration is down. Always a good idea to draw the velocity and the acceleration vectors next to your path. That's really good practice and can help clarify things. So what was object E's initial velocity? Positive 5 meters per second. We know that originally object E was thrown at a speed of 5 meters per second, and since it was thrown up, that was in our positive direction. So its original velocity was positive 5 meters per second. But what's really going to be helpful to us is to know how fast is object E moving when it reaches the same height going downwards. Why do we want to know about this point when it's reaching the same height going downwards? Because that's the point that's easiest to compare to the other two objects. We know how fast object A was going when it was at this height, moving downwards. And we know how fast object B was going when it was at the height of the cliff, moving downwards. So in order to make a fair comparison, we need to know how fast is object E going to be going when it's at the height of the cliff, going downwards. 
Well, based on our symmetry, we know that its speed now would be negative 5 meters per second. Because these two points are at the same height, since it's at this height of the cliff in both cases, they have to have the same speed. If two points are at the same height, the object has to have the same speed. Um, so when we're at the height of the cliff going up, we had a velocity of positive 5. So when we're at the height of the cliff going down, um, it would have picked up, uh, object D has picked up a velocity of negative 5. Okay, and now for comparison, we already know that B is going to end up going faster than A, so let's compare object E and B. Well, when it's at the height of the cliff, object B has a speed of 3 meters per second. And when object E is at the height of the cliff moving down, it has a speed of 5 meters per second. And they're both speeding up. So which is going to end up going faster? Well, object E. If you're starting with a speed of 5 meters per second, um, you're going to end up going faster than if you're starting with a speed of 3 meters per second. So here we have a fair comparison. Here is object B at the height of the cliff with a speed of 3 meters per second. And here's object E at the height of the cliff moving downwards with a speed of 5 meters per second. Um, since it has a greater speed at this height, it's going to end up with a greater speed when it hits the ground. This is really just a little bit more review of the stuff that we've already seen in the previous examples. So object E will hit the ground fastest, then B, and object A will hit the ground slowest. Again, I think this is kind of cool or neat in the sense that um, notice that what matters is not which way you throw the object, but what speed you throw the object at. You might have thought that if you're throwing the object away from the ground, it's not going to hit the ground um, with as much speed, but it doesn't work out that way. What matters is not what direction you're throwing the ground, you, what matters is not what direction you're hitting the, uh, what matters is not whether you're throwing the object up or down, but what speed you're throwing the object with. Uh, by the way, I, I might want to mention that um, if you've studied energy, you should be able to give um, uh, another explanation for this. If you've studied energy, it should be clear to you why what matters is your speed and not what direction you were thrown at. Um, maybe a lot of the people that are watching this video haven't gotten to energy yet um, in their course. But if you've already studied energy, um, then it should be clear to us uh, from the beginning that what matters um, for the speed with which you hit the ground, what matters is the speed with which you were thrown, not whether you were thrown up or down. Uh, but even if you haven't studied energy, we can still understand this based on the symmetry of projectile motion. So don't worry if you haven't studied energy yet. Uh, that was just a parenthetical comment uh, for people who might have already seen energy in their course. Even if you've never heard of energy before, we can still see why all that really matters is the speed at which you were thrown. Uh, because projectile motion is symmetric. So if you're thrown upwards with a speed of 5 meters per second, eventually you're going to pass the same point going downwards with 5 meters per second. So it really didn't make any difference that originally you were thrown up. All right, I think that we uh, went over some really important intuitions for projectile motion in this problem. And like I said, uh, this is stuff that you really want to try to understand and be comfortable with. First of all, because otherwise you're not really learning projectile motion, you're just learning how to plug into equations. But also, even if your goal is just to do well on your exams, if you don't have good intuition for projectile motion, it's going to be hard for you to adapt to the harder types of problems that your instructor might give you. Again, um, the calculation problems that I've given you so far are all really quite easy. Um, there's a very good chance that your instructor is going to give you harder problems on the exam, and a good way to be able to deal with that is to understand this basic intuition. Um, so I hope that um, if you felt that you learned something from this, you'll redo this section of the videos, or maybe you should come back to this in um, a few days or in a week when you might have forgotten uh, the questions and try to go through this conceptually again. Uh, I would recommend keep going through this uh, conceptually every once in a while until you're feeling very comfortable with how we can use symmetry to solve this problem without using any equations.